Hello everyone, I'm Joey from Lock Props. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make Zoro's Blade from One Piece. Now throughout the series, he's had a lot of swords. So what I'm going to be focusing on are the final three swords that he's going to have for this final arc. Now, don't know if he's going to switch up to another sword, but we're just going to focus on three. The Wado Ichimonji, which is the white one that he has from the very beginning of the show. Then we're going to focus on the Kitetsu, as well as the final one so far is Enma. He is definitely my favorite character of the series, and I hope that he is for you guys too. If you've seen the show, you know he is best mate. Zoro uses the three sword styles, so he has one sword in each hand as well as one in his mouth. So if you wanted to follow along with me during this process, my Etsy file is going to be down below as well as affiliate links for the tools and materials that I use to build this. When you use those links, it supports the channel and it helps me make more videos just like this. So thank you. Oh God, like can't, can't hold that in there for very long. That's what she said. First, we'll start off by printing out the template. For right now, we're just gonna cut out the sword. The sheath we'll do later. Take the pieces of the sword template and where the dotted line is, cut one side and then layer it on top of the other one and then you can tape it down. I always go the extra mile by taping the back side too. I always like to piece the template all together first before I start cutting it in half. We're going to separate the handle from the blade and I decided that we're going to work on the blade first. I take out a roll of 5mm EVA foam and I use my heat gun to flatten it out. Laying the template down on the EVA foam, I use my sharpies to trace an outline around it. We're going to need two of these, so be sure to cut out two sides. When I'm cutting the blade out of the EVA foam, I always cut on the outside line of the sharpie, mainly because once we piece it together, we'll be able to sand it down and have almost no seam. I went to the hardware store and I got a stainless steel rod that was 3 16 inch wide, or almost 5 millimeters. Luckily, I was able to bend the rod so then that way it was in the shape of the blade. I laid the rod on top of the foam and I traced it out with my sharpie. Again, to make this trench, you just use a razor blade. You'll cut out a 45 degree angle, but you don't want to go all the way through. That way you can cut out a piece of the foam and that's where the rod is going to stay. But this time around, I decided to just use my router. Also, if you have a Dremel, there is a rotary attachment, so then that way you can do the same thing. I set the router to about 2.5 millimeters deep, and it looks like it is perfect. So I made the trench for one side. Now I need to make the other. I used my heat gun to heat the one side that I hadn't made a trench yet. Then I laid it on top of the rod while it was still warm, and it made an indentation where I can take the router and then make that trench out. Since I was barely able to see the indentation, I used a sharpie to mark where it was, then I took my router and drilled it out. Now that I know where the rod is going to sit, I took my template and I put it right underneath the rod so then that way I know where to cut. I tried my wire cutters, I had small bolt cutters, that didn't work, so I actually had to use a multi-tool to start sawing it off. To glue the pieces together, we're going to be using barge contact cement please be sure to use a respirator. This is a mask. This is a respirator. Use a respirator. The mask is only good for dust. I make sure to do two coats on each side of the blade and I also put contact cement on the rod too. Once it was semi dry and a little tacky, I placed the rod in on one side. Now for the tricky part. When I sandwich this together, I start from one end, but I make sure that I bend the piece of foam back far enough. That way I can know that it's actually going into the trench. Luckily, we have that extra material from the Sharpie, so then that way we can cut off the excess with the razor blade. After the bigger pieces were cut off, I used my Dremel to start evening everything out. When you're dremeling, please wear a respirator to keep the dust from going into your lungs or into your nose. Also, while dremeling, you need to have eye protection, so wear goggles. Before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and add this detail at the base of the blade. I cut the template and then I lay that on top of the foam and I make my mark. Once I mark all the way around, I take my razor blade to start cutting out this small piece. Because I'm going to be sanding down the blade, I want this to stay as a rectangle. 
I place my tape down where I think the blade is going to start beginning that beveled edge. Then I take my digital caliper to make a mark all the way down the blade where I'm going to be sanding. I use painter's tape to create the line where I need to bevel and sand. The painter's tape will actually protect the foam as I'm sanding. That way I can have a nice clean beveled edge. For this process, you can use sandpaper, you can use a Dremel rotary tool, but since I do have it in the shop, I will be using my belt sander. Be sure to use a respirator during this time because dust will get everywhere. To clear up all of the lumpy areas on the blade, I use the orbital sander with a thousand grit sandpaper to even everything out. Then we take off the tape and we can see how clean that line is. I don't want to have sharp edges on the back of my blade, so I took my rotary tool and just took off the very edges of the back. I slid back on the bottom detail of the blade, and then I measured it with my calipers, got out a sheet of foam that was about 2 millimeters thick. I cut a strip out of the foam which was roughly about an inch. I put two layers of contact cement on the base detail of the blade that I just measured and the strip that I just cut out. Once they were semi-dry, I began piecing it together. Now I know that there's going to be a seam line, so I put that on the bottom part of the blade where nobody will see that. I fold it over until it completes the circle. Using my blade, I cut where the seam line is going to be. And then I try and line it up as much as possible. I add some super glue to the base of the blade and then glue it together. To prep the blade for Plasti Dip, I use my heat gun to shrink all the pores. But before we do that, we gotta make the Suba. We'll go ahead and cut out the template, and then use 8mm to be the outside rim of it. Outline it in the foam, then cut it out with the X-Acto blade. Cut the trim off of the template. We'll cut out the circle. Since there's uneven areas when you cut that out, we'll use the Dremel tool to sand it all down and make it smooth. After the sanding, I use the heat gun to shrink the pores again. For the middle part of the Suba, we'll use a four millimeter piece of EVA foam. I place the ring down and then I trace on the inside of it. Using the X-Acto blade, I cut on the outside line of the Sharpie. Doing a test fit seems like it's pretty good. Then I'll use the Dremel tool to just clean it up a little bit and then to also bevel the edges. Once it was ready, I glued it into place using contact cement. I then place a cross incision into the middle of the Suba, that way we can temporarily place it on the rod. Looking good so far, let's go ahead and Plassy Dip. With my spray cans, I always have them warmed up before spraying. This way it comes out more as a mist rather than a blotchy mess. For the Plasti Dip, I do three good coats. Then I take some filler primer and spray on just a couple of light layers. So little problem that I had with the filler primer is that I layered it on a little bit too thick. And the problem with that is, is that when you have foam and then you have a thicker layer of paint, that paint is going to be soft constantly. And so when I went to go put it down after I had fully painted this thing, it left an indent in the paint and I couldn't do anything about it. Even with the heat gun trying to reshape and reform it, because that layer isn't the foam, it's not bouncing back as it should. And so the filler primer had to be completely sanded down and I had to repaint the whole blade section of it again. So when you are going to use filler primer, use a very light amount. Now that the blade and Suba were dry, I used water and the 400 grit sandpaper to start sanding down the pieces. I love filler primer so much because it will actually fill in some of the pores and then I just sand it down and it's pretty smooth before I even get to painting. Now that the filler primer had been sanded down for the sword and the Suba, I can now put on my first layer of paint. For this, I used Rust-Oleum Black Gloss Lacquer. After a couple of hours, I use Rust-Oleum High Gloss Lacquer Sealer. Super shiny. I used yellow frog tape to tape around the bottom detail of the blade. For this paint, I used Rub and Buff Gold Leaf. 
I love the rub and buff because it adds a really nice texture to the blade. For this, I used it for the sword, for the suba, and the sheath. For the next painting section, I used the yellow frog tape to tape off the gold rub and buff on the blade. I loaded up my airbrush and used all clad dark aluminum for the body of the sword. I go in circles, going up the blade until it is completely covered. If you don't have an airbrush, you can use a metallic spray can, whichever color you like. If you want to leave a tone difference between the body and the hamon, you can get a lighter silver for the hamon and the darker silver for the body. Next, I want to make sure that we have that swivelly line in our blade. So I take the template and I cut it out with my X-Acto blade. I then lay it on my table and use the yellow frog tape to sit on top of the template. Then using the X-Acto blade, I'll butt the blade up against the template and cut all the way down. After I cut all the way down, I rip off the tape from the template and then place it on the blade. Since there are two sides, I had to flip the template and do the exact same thing. Once I verified that the rest of the blade was not covered up and it won't get any of this high chrome finish, then I began spraying with all clad chrome. Peeling off the tape when you have a clean line is so awesome. While that's drying, I can work on the handle. I'll take the template and cut off where the suba is. I got out a sheet of 10 millimeter EVA foam, traced, and then cut out two pieces for the handle. Same thing with the blade, I'll be cutting on the outside line of the Sharpie. I found the center of the handle and I marked where the rod is going to be sitting. I used the router to make the trench, but I didn't go all the way to the end of the handle. To piece them together, I used two layers of contact cement. When joining the handle pieces together, I am going slow, so I make sure that the rod is sitting on the inside of the trench. Using a straight edge, I cut off the excess to make it a little bit more even on the sides. The curved area, I had to use my rotary tool to even everything out. If you only have a rotary tool or sandpaper, this is where you're going to be sanding down the edges to make this more round. But I used my belt sander and rounding it out didn't take any time at all. Using 600 grit on my orbital sander, I evened everything out even more. Then use the heat gun to get rid of all those little fuzzies. Next, we're going to be working on the pommel of the handle. In order to make a template for this, I wrap the handle with some plastic wrap. I cover the end of the pommel with some masking tape, and then that way I can draw on my template. I'll cut it out using my razor blade, but we need to flatten this out. So I make some incisions in the middle and on the sides. But first I need to transfer this to paper. So I take my tape template, trace it around with the Sharpie and then cut it out. Then I transferred the template onto four millimeter EVA foam. For these tight corners, I thought using the X-Acto blade would be a better solution. Next, I take my contact cement and put two good layers into the darts that I made. Once they were slightly dry, I began piecing the darts together. Before putting contact cement on the inside of the pommel, I put it on top of the handle just for a test fit and it seemed like it worked. With my rotary tool, I went over to the seams and began sanding them down just a little bit. Using cosplay foam clay and a little bit of water, you can clean up these seams to have it look like it's all one piece. We can now cut out the half circle that's in the pommel. For this, I used the largest size that I had of this hole punch set, but if you don't have hole punches, you can use an X-Acto blade or you can use a copper pipe from the hardware store. I lined up the hole punch and then I hammered it in. The small detail that's on the pommel is roughly around two millimeters. I had a little bit of extra two millimeter strip lying around, so I cut out another two by two millimeter EVA foam strip. Since the EVA foam is so thin, I grabbed some masking tape and turned it inside out and then taped the edges down. That way it won't come up while I'm applying the contact cement. While that was drying on the pommel, I applied the thinnest layer of contact cement. Starting from one end, I have it go all the way around tracing the edges of the pommel. 
Once I got to the end, I cut where the seam line is going to be and then applied just a little bit of more contact cement. Since the contact cement is called barge, I'm just gonna call it barge for the rest of the video. Once glued into place, I used my Dremel tool to start evening out the edge. Got the barge and then I slathered it on the inside. I also applied another layer before I put it together. Using what was left of the two millimeter strip of foam, I cut out another strip that was about four millimeters deep. I set it down on a scrap piece of paper and applied two layers of barge. While that was drying, I applied barge to the top of the handle where the strip is gonna go. Now that the details for the handle were done, I masked around the handle that are gonna be gold. Once the rub and buff was dried, now I can wrap the handle. I applied some super glue up at the very top where I'm gonna begin my wrap. This way it doesn't unravel on me while I'm in the middle of working with it. It may not be a traditional handle wrap, but it's good enough for cosplay. If you see my other videos, you'll see this same process. This is no exception. We're gonna be taking the left side, crossing over to the right side, twisting up twice, then we'll pinch it with our thumb, grab the right side of the ribbon, cross over to the left, then we'll twist up twice as well. What I like to do is when I rotate, I will put some super glue in an area so then that way it doesn't unravel on me in case of my hands happen to slip. Then I repeat that process all the way down the handle. When I get to the end, I snip off a little bit and then I burn the edges so then that way they don't fray. I apply some super glue at the end and just layer it over each other. Now with the painting of the blade all done, we don't want to piece it all together just yet because we still need to make the sheath. Going back to the template, we'll go ahead and piece it together and cut it out. We don't actually use the paper template to cut out the foam. We use the blade that we made to cut out the foam, mainly because there is going to be some minor differences that won't fit the blade if you were to do that. It's more for you to just get an idea of what it's going to look like. Using five millimeter EVA foam, we'll go ahead and rest the blade on top of the foam. I slowly trace around the blade, making sure that the Sharpie line does not touch the paint that we just did. We'll flip the blade over and do the exact same thing. From my rough estimate, I added on an extra two millimeter spacing for the sheath. I'll then cut out both of those pieces of the sheath and cut along the outside line of the Sharpie. I have to measure the thickness of the bottom of the blade because that is the widest part. With my calipers, I measured 15 millimeters. So since I'm gonna be needing a long strip of foam, I use my straight edge ruler to cut a clean line into my foam to work off of. Then using the digital calipers at 25 millimeters, I mark a line going all the way across. I need to cut out two of these. On each strip and each side of the sheath, I barge cemented the entire way. My main focus for putting on the strip onto the foam is to line up the edges. I do a test fit to make sure that the blade can sit in the sheath properly. Then I slap more barge cement onto the top layer. Then I slowly lowered the top part of the EVA foam onto where I had barged, making a sword coffin. There's always gonna be a little bit of an overlap, but for the big pieces, use your razor blade to cut the excess off. Since I made it longer than needed, I just cut off the excess at the end. Made one more test fit and if it it's like a glove. For rounding over the edges of the sheath, I didn't want to take it to my belt sander because I felt like that would take off way too much at once. So I stuck with a higher grit sanding drum with my Dremel. Then I switched over to my orbital sander using a higher grit, like around 800 to 1000, just to even everything out. After sanding, I always heat seal the foam. Next, we can make this little detail for the sheath. I cut out a half inch strip of two millimeter EVA foam. I barge cement the strip, I barge cement the sheath, then I put it together. 
Once the barge was tacky, I put the seams together. I cleaned up the end by sanding it down. Okay, so I lied. We'll use the template to round over the edges. We'll mark the sharpie so we can get the rounded shape of it. Then I cut off the biggest excess pieces of the corners. Then I took it to the belt sander to round it down. For the bottom part of the sheath, I used the same 5mm EVA foam to cut out two blocks that should be the side of that end. I really don't know what that piece is called, but basically it's the butt of the sheath. After I sanded it down, I put it on top of the EVA foam and traced around the outside edge of the sheath. I cut out one side of the detail, then I put it on top of another piece of foam and traced it out. Using my Sharpie, I created a half circle and used the X-Acto blade to cut it out. Since both sides are mirrored, I did the exact same thing twice. I grabbed my rotary tool with a high grit sanding drum and started cleaning up the edges. I barged the details and the bottom of the sheath, waited until they were tacky and put them on. For the sheath thickness, I measured 25 millimeters. So I need to make a strip of foam that's 25 millimeters wide. I ran the calipers down the strip of foam and cut it out. I wrapped it around without having any barge on it just because I wanted to make sure that it fully fit. Once I saw that it was more than enough, I cut off the excess. Now I can barge the bottom and the side pieces. Whenever I do shapes like these, they are really rough in the beginning, but by using the rotary tool, you can sand it down and make it smooth and round. I did three coats of Plasti Dip and three light coats of filler primer for the sheath. Starting off with 220 grit sandpaper, I wet sanded before going up to 400 grit sandpaper and continuing that wet sand. I did one more light pass of the Rust-Oleum Sandable Primer before spraying it with Rust-Oleum White Lacquer and the clear gloss. Once it was completely dry, I grabbed the yellow frog tape and started masking off the details. A lot of times for these curved areas, I use the masking tape to slightly cut into the prop a little bit, enough that I can peel off the excess masking tape. Going back to the rub and buff gold leaf, we're going to paint on the rest of the detail. Oh, this is my favorite part. It's so satisfying to take off masking tape for the final time on a project. To piece the sword together, I use two part epoxy to go onto the rod and on the suba. I make sure to really have a good amount in the areas that we're not gonna see. And final fitting. I hope you enjoyed this process as much as I did. I love the way that the paint came out on the blade here and can't wait to get started on the next one because the hamon on those blades are going to be a lot more intricate so that's going to take a lot longer but once that video goes live i'm going to go ahead and post it right here for you so then that way you can click it now please be sure to also like comment and subscribe because it helps out the channel a lot by doing that